All right, good afternoon, everyone. Glad you all could uh, take some time this afternoon to have a look at ProS. Today we're going to talk about cloud estimating and the secret to winning more bids. That's the title of today's webinar. I'm Troy Simon. I'm going to be your host for about the next 30 minutes. And um, just before we uh, get into the, the demonstration here, just a couple of things I'd like to share with you guys. A bit about my background, I've, I've spent the last about 15 years working in construction technology. Um, roughly 10 of those years, I would say I specialized in estimating solutions, um, and the other five more centered probably around ERP and project management uh, softwares. Uh, I came on board with ProS a couple years back uh, to help build the professional services team, and now with Autodesk, I get to expand on that role a bit as we move towards a more unified solution in our pre-construction product offerings. But needless to say, I'm very excited about the future of this product. I'm very excited about the future of Autodesk and just thrilled to be a part of this great team and organization. And uh, really excited that you guys are all here on the call today. Um, as just a little housekeeping um, before we get started, as some of you guys may have questions along the way as we go through this demo. There's a chat panel inside of a GoToWebinar, just put your questions in that chat panel. And if we can answer them right away, we will. Otherwise, there is going to be a Q&A section at the end um, of today's meeting. So we'll, we'll try to get all your questions answered um, if we have time today. So the, um, during just a little quick agenda, the, the presentation is gonna be just a little bit about cloud estimating. We're gonna talk uh, just a brief intro on this on this slide deck here about ProS, and then we're gonna get right into it. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time showing you guys uh, PowerPoint slides today. We'll, we'll show a lot of the software. Uh, so I, I talk with contractors almost every single day. So I know many of you, if not all of you on this call, um, either know these challenges intimately or can at least relate to them. I mean, as estimators, it, you know, we have to get it right, right? We're talking about estimating, um, but when, there's manual processes uh, and disconnected workflows in place. Sometimes it's hard to know if our bids are always accurate, right? We, we, we hope they are and uh, as we go through it, but if we have data living in, in say one system and it doesn't talk to another system or we're manually copying and pasting numbers from takeoff to Excel, um, that, that's a challenge, right? There was integrity of data that could be lost uh, in those processes or maybe there's many of you that they don't even have a standard database, right, to reference, or you lack other tools that make collaboration possible in general. So you have multiple estimators, maybe at different offices, things of that nature. And that collaboration that really is needed to be more efficient in your estimating team is, is just not there. It's not, it's not capable given the tools that you have in place right now. And that really makes for one of the big complaints that, that, that we hear um, before people use a product like ProS is that conceptual estimating just takes way longer than it needs to take um, for a lot of our clients. And so this is where ProS really uh, comes in. I mean, it was a system that was born in the cloud, built for the cloud. Um, it's it's cloud-based estimating, right? And it's for GCs and subcontractors, so you don't have to really fit in a certain subset of the market to, to use ProS. But it's going to give you more confidence that your estimates are accurate and your bids are competitive. So you got to think about no more uh, broken Excel formulas, no more copy and paste, right? Um, ProS comes out of the box with a complete database offering, right? So you, it may be a more standardized sort of, um, let's call it generic, if you will, database um, for, a, for a general contractor or for a plumbing contractor, right? Or it can be a more complex, more complete database, like I'm going to show you today in ProS Costbook that has city cost index multipliers in it to help you get the most accurate pricing based on the region that you're building in. And there's, a, there's much more to this program that we can possibly show in, in, in 20 or 30 minutes today. So the goal is just to give you a really good overview on ProS and, and how it works. And what makes it different is that there's centralized data, right, that can be accessed anywhere. So no matter where you're at, as long as you have an internet connection, your team can access ProS, right? From a laptop, from an iPad, it really doesn't matter. You can create detailed estimates, you can create 2D um, takeoffs, right? So there's built-in takeoff in this system. Now you don't have to use ProS takeoff, you could use a different solution and, and, and key your numbers in if that's what you feel like, but this ProS was designed to be more of an all-in-one tool. 
and it'll generate proposals quickly and, and certainly uh, last but not least in these points is you're going to really have that real-time collaboration uh, that many of you are looking for in a software. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into ProS. We'll get into the product demo here and let me get out of this screen and we'll come over here to ProS. If you guys should all be taking a look at the ProS homepage. So it's, it's browser-based, so um, whether you're using Google or Firefox or whatever, uh, Edge, you'll just simply go to ProS.com, hit the login button, and then when you put your credentials in, it brings you to our home screen. Now, the home screen uh, on this page has just a little bit of relevant data that uh, you guys may like, right? So you can take a look at some quick metrics for your company. How many open estimates do I have by a certain weeds estimate types to kind of designate different estimate types or buildings that we were reconstructing? Um, what are the statuses of those bids that we have open right now? And these, these are, we have about 16 different widgets, if you will, that you could, you could use in this section um, that it gets deployed during the implementation process. You guys will pick which one you like. And over here on the left, we've got task and events. So think of this as all sort of like a, a, a bid schedule reminder, right, or a task reminder. There's some built-in CRM capabilities in ProS so you can start assigning tasks and follow-up calls within the system and reminders. And they show up here when you log in each day. You can sort of see a list of, hey, here's all my today and past due, or maybe you just want to look at anything that's due today. Right, so the users can filter through that. There's also a bid calendar. So this will start to track where all your bids are due. As you start estimates in ProS, um, you'll enter a bid due date. And those due dates all transfer to this calendar. The calendar can sync to, uh, to your uh, work calendar. Using the sync tool up here, we can sync to Outlook calendars, Gmail calendars. Now, it's a one-way sync, so we're not going to pull your data into ProS. It's just more if you wanted to send these bid date, due dates out and sync it to your calendar. You can certainly do that as well using the sync tool that's here. Um, so I'm not really going to get into a whole lot of, of detail on a, a lot of things, but uh, one thing that is sort of the driving force of ProS, before we get into creating an estimate, I just want to touch just briefly, if you guys will indulge me, in the database. Um, and there's a lot you could talk about in the database. I just want to touch on a few points in here. So it's it's broken out into items and assemblies. Now this is the ProS cost book. So this database has roughly 23,000 items uh, in inside of it, right? Different cost items. And, and I'll show you the multiplier as we get into the estimating section, how that works based on the city that you're in. But all the items have a base or a standard sort of average cost for an item. So if we take and open up a, a folder and let's go down to like say Jitboard. And if we look at one of these items here, we could see that this particular uh, 3H drywall uh, uh, with clip columns and beams, it's a square foot takeoff item and it's got a material cost of 37 cents a square foot. It's got some labor already priced into it and there's a lot more detail that you could. So notice that you could have up to five cost types on a single item. Doesn't mean you have to, you just certainly could depending on the level of detail that you need on a single line item have up to five cost types. Now within each cost type, there's even more data that we track for you. So if you think about material, maybe I take off drywall by the square foot, but when I purchase it, I need to purchase it by the piece. So if I wanted to, and I wanted to get a real accurate count of how much drywall I have or how many pieces, I could say, that, well, when I factor this, I want to say for every 48, um, square feet, so let's think I'm doing a four by 12 sheet of drywall, I need to get one piece of drywall, right? And so now I can start to get a count of how much drywall I want. And now I can start to change these factors if I wanted to, right? I could say, well, it's no longer 37 cents a square foot. Really for each piece of drywall, it's about $13 a sheet or whatever the, the cost is that you want to use per that item. And now I've got a more updated unit cost per square foot based on the sheet of drywall that I'm buying. I can also factor in things like waste factor, right? If I know I've got a certain amount of, of, of waste on a product or, or an item, I can go ahead and factor that. I say I always know I'm going to waste 10%. And I can't buy a half a sheet of drywall, so I want to make sure I'm rounding up. So now when I'm taking off quantity, now I'm getting a real accurate amount of quantity of drywall if I want it. Now, some of you don't need to get every stick and brick in the building. So don't get freaked out by this. It's okay. You don't have to have this level of detail. 
ProS can be set up to where it's real, just sort of unit-based estimating. I don't have to get a high level of detail. I'm subbing everything out anyways. I'm going to rely heavily on my sub quotes and I'm going to manage those quotes. Totally fine. This is more for you guys that maybe self-perform work and or you buy the material and you really need a lot of detail for each item. You can certainly get that here. Same thing with labor. Um, you can factor your labor. So in this case, I'm saying I've got a carpenter as a labor type. And don't worry about the setup on this. This all happens behind the scenes during implementation. Uh, my team helps you go through this. It's, it's very easy to get this set up and configured for your company. Um, but I can say, well, this labor type is $80 an hour. It's what's running. I mean, I, I'm, my productivity on this item is 400 square feet a day. So a single person Hanging this drywall I, is going to do about 400 square foot a day for this item. Now, for your company, that may be up or down. doesn't matter. You can change this either at the database level, inside the database that's there forever, or you can change it at the estimate level, and it only affects the estimate that you're in. So we give you a lot of flexibility on how you want to deploy this and how you want to use it. And then, of course, we got subcontractor equipment and other costs. Now, down below, you'll notice there's some other fields in here that we're not going to cover today. Um, you can add crews to an item, so maybe you don't think of it as a single labor type. You want to build more of a three-man, four-man, eight-man crew for the item that you're using. You can build those here and attach them to the items, okay? Um, we can put standard text and notes with the items. We track every change to the database. So this is super critical, right? You change a price or something in your Excel spreadsheet. It doesn't. You don't really know when it was changed, who changed it, or what. This logs every change, which person that logged into ProS made the change, what was the date and time they made the change, what field did they change, what the old value was and what the new value is. So you can always go and revert back to the old value that was in ProS. And this list goes on for eternity. It never ends, never quits. You can always go back and reference these changes. So that covers items. That's a single item. We also have pre-built assemblies for you guys. So you don't have to start from scratch. Again, for you contractors that want a little bit more detail in your estimating, you can build assemblies and you can quantify a group of items in a single takeoff. So let's take something easy um, like a slab. So we'll use this six inch slab on grade. This, when I do a takeoff of square foot and I get the slab area for this slab, it's gonna go ahead and give me my vapor barrier, my mesh, or this could be rebar, just depends on how you want to price it out. Um, the concrete that I have in the slab, the fill, the forms, the chairs, the finish, and the termite control. Now this is a kind of a base assembly. This can be copied, it can be modified, it could be added to. You can make this your own. You don't, you're not stuck with this. You can make as many changes as you want. It's very easy to make a copy of any of these assemblies and start adding to them and sort of replicating and making them your own. Again, all the stuff that we cover during the implementation phase of ProS, and it's very, very easy to do. It's very user-friendly. All right, so thank you for taking a few minutes and just looking at that database. I'm gonna jump into what you guys probably wanna see more along the lines in the estimate. How do we do an estimate? How do we start an estimate? How do we do a takeoff from ProS? Let's see how that works. So very, very, again, very easy to use, very well-defined. All you do is click Add New Estimate. When you click Add New Estimate in ProS, you get a, an entire setup page, right? So in here, there's a lot of uh, detail that you can put, uh, you can add to the job, but you don't have to. We don't force you as users to fill everything out in order to start a project. You know, sometimes you just need to do a quick takeoff. You don't want to put a bunch of information in your estimate. And that, that's the case, you can just go ahead and type in, I'll just put test in here for this example. Um, office types and or estimate types in office building, and I'm just going to pick a due date of the 28th. I could stop right there and not put anything else in, hit save, and I could start an estimate, do a takeoff, and I don't need anything else. But you may not want to do that because there may be other items in your bid that you want to track, things like total size of the project. Maybe this is a 30,000 square foot, you know, retail space or something like that. So I want to track that, and so and 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 maybe. I have other estimators that I want to invite. This is where the cool thing gets in with collaboration. It's not just me doing the estimating. I want to invite other members of the team. So I want to invite Greg and I want to invite Cindy and they're going to help me out on this estimate. I can choose to invite them and I hit save. It sends them an email invite and says, hey, I'm starting this project. I want you to bid on this with me, work on this project with me. I can add contact information. So think of this as all your clients. You want to create a proposal. 
there's a built-in, again, little CRM portion of ProS that tracks all the client data, right? And it'll track a lot of cool things like how many jobs have you done with them? What total volume uh, have, they, have, they, have, you, have you estimated for a certain company um, or client, right? And it'll pull that information over all the relatable address information. So when I go to print a proposal, I don't have to key all that data in again. It's already in my system. All I did is recall it here on my estimate setup. I could put site information. Maybe my site address that I'm doing the work at is different than the client or the customer address. So this is different information. I can use this information, again, for proposal, for reporting purposes. I put it in one spot. It tracks throughout the entire project with me. I'm also able to include scope, right? So I want to think about typing out a scope, my scope of work for the project. Maybe I put my inclusions and exclusions. We give you a spot for all that. These are all used for proposal creation. So when you go to submit that bid to the client, you've got a full estimate of all the detail you want in the cost line item section, but you also have a full scope of work, inclusions and exclusions pages that you can include in those proposals. So again, no more having to recreate this in Word or some other document. You're already in ProS doing the work. You just create it right here. Very, very easy to use. So I'm going to hit cancel on this one because I fired up a couple of jobs and I want to use these jobs because I want you guys to see a little bit how they work and what the differences in the two because I really want to show you the cost book index and how it affects things, right? So in the estimate setup, you'll notice I've got ProS Webinar Estimate 1. I've got ProS Webinar Estimate 2 within my estimate center. So these are two jobs. They're basically, think of it as version 1 and version 2. Okay, now the only difference in these two jobs, and you'll notice my total estimate price varies quite a bit, is because inside of the estimate setup for estimate one, I don't have a cost book location applied. All I have is just the standard sort of industry average unit cost for items. Okay, the takeoff is exactly the same. We haven't modified anything yet. But you'll notice in estimate number two when I click on the setup, I've assigned this one to Los Angeles, California. So think about things like concrete and things like that, and it's the labor cost of California. Significantly higher than maybe rural America, right, or across the, nat the national average for pricing for that stuff. So it's gonna bump that price up significantly when I'm working in a metro market like Los Angeles versus maybe when I'm working you know, in a small town uh, in say, middle of Arkansas, right, something like that. Uh, so that's the major difference. So I, that's the difference too. And I'll show you this in the reporting and how it works. But this is where you make that change. And when you tell it the location, it automatically changes your pricing in the estimate. Again, leave the database intact. All that price remains the same because you want some uniformity there. It just changes it on the geographic location of your estimate. So let's open up the estimate. I click on the estimate and the estimate center. It goes ahead and opens up my estimate. Now you'll notice I've got my estimate already grouped, and it's grouped by assemblies because I've taken off a lot of assemblies in this project. Um, I'm going to expand this out just a bit so you can see all the level of detail that I have inside there. So if I expand all these assemblies, you can notice I've taken out, there's my slab on grade that we referenced earlier, and I've got, you know, my, 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 my rebar, my finishing, my termite control. I've got a continuous footing in here that I've done some takeoff, and so I'm really tracking um, as much detail as I want in my estimate. Now, there's there's different views that I'll get into here in just a second, and I'll show you that. But what I first want to do is show you documents, right? I want to start an estimate. I want to show you how these quantities got here in the first place. I loaded up a document inside of ProS Documents, and I loaded up a set of plans. Now, I can go ahead. When I load drawings up, ProS will go ahead and identify page numbers and page descriptions. It'll if, if called for on the plan, it'll go ahead and find the call outs on the drawing as well. Um, I can assign a drawing type and also assign a set. Now, we're not going to get into this today, but should you guys get a full demo later on of ProS, you'll see how you can actually assign versions and do manage your sheet revisions right inside of ProS and handle a takeoff overlay, um, which, which is a very cool feature in here. It makes it very easy to find those changes on drawings. So I load my drawings up, and then I can immediately come to the takeoff section. So I want to show you a couple of things in takeoff. I know many of you on the call today have either seen takeoff, and probably most of you have used a digital takeoff plan. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time showing you how to do takeoff because it, it pretty much works the same as you're probably using in, in a different software currently. But 
I do want to show you a couple key things. So one, my takeoff list runs down my left-hand side of my panel here. I can add a new takeoff easily by just typing in right up here, add new takeoff. So let's say, for instance, I wanted to um, count some sinks that are here, right? So I could type in sinks. And I can see what pulls up and I go, okay, um, I want, uh, it's not the one I want. I want to look for like an industrial sink. I can search the list of all the different sinks that are here. And let's just pick this one right there. Okay. Oh, right away it's telling me that I didn't set a scale for my drawing. So we have a sort of a built-in safety feature. You can turn this off if you want, uh, but I leave mine on. And you can say, hey, you don't have a scale set. Make sure you set your scale first. So I say, okay. I can come quickly down here and find out what the scale is. Now you have two options for setting scale. You can click here and you can set a, cut, set a scale or you can do a custom scale. Because I trust this drawing, I've used it a, a million times, I'm just going to come in here and say this is quarter inch and I hit save. And it sets the scale for this page. Now, if I had already done a takeoff in a different scale and I change the scale, it's going to update quantity for me. Um, if, if I haven't, then nothing will change in this estimate. So let's take a look. Let's go back here. I'll click on there. I'm going to grab this sink again. And now notice I've added the sink to my takeoff list. Now I could manually just go click, 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 and take those off. There's only a few of them in here. So it's not really a great item to do an auto count on. But I could nonetheless auto count these for me by clicking on this calculator here. And then all I do is zoom in using my mouse wheel. I'm just going to left click and drag a box around here. It's going to search the drawing for all those sinks and says, yes, I want all these. Now, maybe for whatever reason, this one that's turned uh, opposite of these here, I don't want this one. I can uncheck that by left clicking on it and say save, and now it'll only count those four instead of adding this one that's down here, okay? Um, so that was real easy, just a normal feature, click, and you can auto count them as well, which is really nice. If you got a lot of things in your drawing, you don't have to click on each one, you can auto count those. Let's do something else like a square foot takeoff. Let's do something like tile, right? Like acoustical tile. So let's say acoustical tile. I just come in here and search for that. Acoustical ceiling. I could do an assembly if I wanted, or I could take off just a single line item of takeoff, right? So again, maybe this has a bunch of quantity in it, uh, or a bunch of quantity, several line items in it wrapped into one versus a single line. Let's go ahead and do this two by four acoustical ceiling. Now, I can do an area takeoff by left click and drag, and I can just take off the entire area. Or if it's sort of a, you know, a, a different shape, it's not a square uh, room, I, I can left click and go point to point around the area, and it'll put these points in a drawing for me. So however I prefer, when I'm done, left, I just double click and it finishes my drawing, and it gives me my total square footage of area for that room. Okay, again, very simple uh, takeoff. One last thing I want to show you, because I do want to show you a lineal foot takeoff. Let's do one more, and let's just take off some counter. So let's see, counter, let's see, I think it's countertop. And let's look at, um, let's just take this one off here. Oh, that wasn't the one I want. Apologize for that. I want a linear foot. So let's see, countertop, and let's just take this um, lemonade plastic here. I just want to take this one off right here. I can just, from linear foot, I'm just going to go point A, left click point B, double click when I'm done, and there I got my linear foot of counter that I'm going to need uh, for this little small kitchen area here that's in my room. So as you can see, in this estimate, I've done a bunch of takeoff already. So if we go through and look through some of the pages, you can see some of the site takeoff I've done. Um, oops. Page I don't know, page two here. Um, I've got some concrete takeoff. I've got some paving. I've counted a couple of trees, right? So as building this bid, I've just done some takeoff. And you can real quickly, these colors can be changed and modified. So if I wanted to change the color of this fencing that I've taken off here, I can real quickly come in and change the color. I can change the opacity. I can change the line style. I can change the thickness. I can go ahead and assign a sort type. Now we haven't gotten into this, but we will here in just a minute on how I group items together, but I could go ahead and assign a sort type inside the properties box there as well. All right. So I want to keep moving because I know we have a lot to cover. Um, I want to move out of the takeoff. So everybody sees how you do a takeoff. Very simple. And all the items, the cool thing is as I've been taking off the sink, the ceiling, the countertops, those items, watch here when I go to my estimate, 
I don't have to add them into the estimate. They're already in my estimate page. So you can see down here, I saw it pop up. My um, two by four, let's just group this so we can see it maybe a little bit better by division. So we can see inside of, you know, finishes. Actually, you know what? No, let me go back. I did have, apologize for that. I did have that assembly taken for the two by four acoustical ceiling right here. There's that two by four acoustical ceiling that I took off. It has the ceiling tiles, the suspension system, and the metal that I need for that tile. Then I can go in here and modify those items, just like if I were in the database and say, you know what? My material cost on this is in fact not I don't want to use that base average of 250 on this one. I need to bump that up a little bit. Um, if I wanted to, um, I can make changes. Or maybe I need to add, a, more importantly, I need to add something. Maybe I want to factor some subcontractor labor and say, yeah, it's going to cost me, you know, you know, 75 bucks a square foot to get this installed. Um, so you can, you can make quick edits to items right there within the estimate. These things marked here, no assembly. That's those two single cost items I did for the sink and the countertops. You can see. They're in my bid automatically, right? Um, so inside here, I can substitute. Maybe when I took this off, I took this off with this. Um, let's look here at, uh, let's do the slab on grade. So in this slab, remember I was talking earlier, it was taken off with mesh, but maybe I say, you know what? I really don't want mesh. I want something different. If I click on that replace item, it pulls up my database and it allows me to pick either a different size mesh Right, or maybe I want to go in and I want to pick a different type of reinforcing altogether. I could select something different from my item catalog. I got the full complement of items that I can pick from and make a quick item substitution. Okay. And it's just, just as easy as going in, clicking the item that I want, and it's going to replace that item inside of my bid with the other item. So very quickly, I took off one item, but I want to just go in and say, you know, you know what, instead of that one, I want to use this six by six, two by nine, I click on that and it makes that switch out for me. Okay, so very easy to make a quick item substitution. You can group, you notice I grouped earlier, I grouped my estimate, I said, let's look at it by division. So I can look at things um, by assembly, I can look at it by subdivision. That's how my database is. This database is kind of in that master format look, so it starts to break things out by those traditional CSI cost codes that you see here. I can again expand on that if I want some more detail. Maybe I don't care. I just want to look at it by division. I can group it by division. Um, maybe I want to look at it by, by a certain WBS code or a phase. Um, I can do that as well. And so that's easy enough to do by phase. And phases would be defined. Think of these as like work breakdown structures inside of sort types, right? You set those up either at the beginning of the job or you can have those set up by default. And then it's really just a matter of going into your bid and assigning different sort values to items. So I, in this case, I broke it out by building, by G, general conditions, and by site. And let's put let's put this stuff to building. This those items were those single item takeoffs I did for sinks and whatnot. So now when I go to report this out, I don't have to break it up by necessarily by master format. I could report on this by phase. I could report on this by bid item. I could report on this by floor, right? So if I need to break a job out for a customer, say, hey, show me everything on floor one, floor two, floor three, I can start breaking that estimate out however I want to, very quickly, very easily. Inside your estimate as well, maybe it's coming down and you need to update some pricing, you need to change something, you can really quickly, let's expand this out so you can see what I'm talking about. So I've got my entire bid expanded here. And what I can do, I can search. Let's say I want to search for concrete because I need to update my pricing or check my pricing. We have kind of like a Google search in ProS. I click on concrete. It's going to pull up that everything in my bid that's related to concrete. Notice everything that has the word concrete in it is going to show up here. So if I needed to make a quick change to the material cost or add a subcontractor cost or change a grouping of some kind, very quickly to find what I'm looking for. And then sort of last but not least in this section here is the summary page. So you've done a bunch of takeoff, you've added a bunch of your, your general condition items and, and mobilization and things like that to your bid, um, which by the way, one thing I skipped, but I won't, I won't show it to you because you get the idea. I can add an item just on the fly to my bid by simply clicking on add new item. So if I wanted to just type something in, just maybe I'll we'll show it to you. I can just type it in and just add an item. Now, if an item's not in your list, you say, what if an item's not in the list? 
doesn't matter. You can add it in any way as a one-time item. It's just not going to pull data from the database. That's, that's all. You can add in random items very quickly right here. Um, I want to show you the summary page, though, because I want to be mindful of everyone's time. And the summary page is where you set up all of your markups, right? So think of overhead, insurance, profit, bond, uh, things of that nature, sales tax, right? This could be the limits here are really only what you can imagine, right? You could have multiple levels of markups to your bid. You could filter these markups to certain items. So maybe like as an example, um, I only wanted a certain overhead item to hit my general conditions. I could filter it out. Now watch this number right here. I could say for, for this overhead, let's just, in fact, let's just rename it. I could say for this GC's overhead or markup, whatever you want to call it, I want to filter that and only, I only want that to apply to anything in division one. If I do that, notice that 325,000 comes down to 55,000, right? So I can tell the system where I want my markups applied. I can filter those out. I could even take it a step further and say, you know what? I only want to hit general conditions. I also only want it to hit um, labor, right? So I could come through and uncheck all the cost types. So if I had some material items in there, look at what it is now. Now this is only a markup on my general conditions labor, right? So again, I just want to show you, this could be whatever you really wanted it to be. That was just something real quick to show you how the filtering and cost type process worked. Let me put this back. Let me turn this off. And now we're back to our original $325,000 markup for general conditions or overhead, I should say. Now, these can, these can all be set up in a default manner. So inside of system settings, you, this is what we do with you guys on configuration, right? So our team will come in. We'll identify your needs. Like, what do you guys need? How do you want to run your estimates? We'll, over, we'll look at your current setup and based on what you tell us how you'd like to do your estimating and ProS, we'll help you make some decisions and set up up here. And one of the things we do is set up your markups. So we can set up these by default. So every time you start a job, you have the same markup sheet in it. You could do this though. Maybe you have a different markup for certain estimate types. Maybe your markups on say multifamily are maybe different than a government job or an educational type job or something like that you can have a different set of markups for a different type of estimate type, and we'll help you get all that set up inside of ProS. And then last but not least, in system settings, the one thing I do want to show you is our uh, integrations. So along with just doing your estimating is like the first step, we can take this cost budget that we have inside of ProS and send it to things like Autodesk Build. This is one of our latest integrations that we have here, right? Um, we can send it to ERPs like Acumatica, um, or maybe you're using Procore or Foundation or Computeries, right? Anything you see in this list, we can send data to. Two things that aren't on here, we have a ProS API. So if you have a third-party product and you want to connect to ProS with an API, you can actually, uh, we'll give you that data and you can use it to create some custom uh, some custom API integration on your own product. We also have, it's not listed in here, is Power BI integration. So, so for those of you that love data and you love dashboarding, ProS integrates with Power BI as well. All right, so that covers that. One more thing, and then we'll get into the Q&A section of our demo, is I, want, I didn't show you, and I apologize, I had on my agenda, is reports. So I created this estimate, now what I really want to do is report on it. So I have this $4 million bid. Maybe I want to look at things like an overview report. These are all just standard reports in ProS. I want to look at like a cost total report. Okay. And so I can start to look at my cost totals and notice at the top, all this is thinking I can group this report by division or subdivision. So this is giving me a high level of detail, everything in concrete, what the total is, what the percentage of my job is and what the unit cost is for that item. And then I have all of my markups down below. So I've got my direct cost for the job, and then here's what I plan to make on the job for my total, right? So I can group it. If I don't want to do it by division, maybe I want a little bit more detail, I can group it out by subdivision or my CSI codes. And now I'm going to get a little bit more detail in this report. So I can say within general conditions, here's what make up my cost. I got field staff, I got some 
temp facilities and sanitariums and signage, right? And this has given me my total for that for that area. Maybe I'm a uh, contractor, and I, maybe I need to buy some material, right? So I can take a look at things like a pricing type report and get a material list. And again, I can group this up by division, subdivision, things of that nature, but maybe I just want to say, how many, how much do I have, right? So this has given me an exact quantity of all of my material items that are in this job, right? Maybe it's important for me to get labor. So I want to do like a scope type report and get a labor cost report. So I can look at labor in the same way I do material. What's my total for labor based on those areas? So I've got, you know, a description of the item and I've got the labor type that I'm using, what the hourly cost is, what am I estimating the productivity to be? So at a real quick glance, I could run this report and make sure all of my labor productivity in my bid is correct, right? And I got a labor hours and then a total cost on labor. It's a very, very nice report. We also have the ability to make custom reports, and we show you guys how to do this, or we do it for you. It's how whatever you prefer. We can teach you to fish or just do your fishing. So in, you can create proposals, and this is generally what most people uh, would create in the custom section would be a proposal, right? You, have, you each have a unique format. So this is something real basic that I just cooked up. It's got just a few columns in it. It's got some client information here and, and who the estimator is on the project and what the total on the, on the project is. Or you could go a little bit more detailed. And again, this could have your logo sitting in, in, in here as well. It could have more detailed client information based on that relationship setup. But more importantly, down here, I can get a little bit more information on cost, right? So I want to say, here's what I've got in, in general conditions, here's what I have in concrete, things of that nature. And then all the way at the bottom of the report, maybe I need to report to the client, show them, hey, here's all my markups. I'm transparent, right? Here's what I'm making on this. Here's what I got for overhead insurance, profit, and bond. Right, so if you wanted to report that level of detail, you certainly could. Okay. All right. I think um, we're at the point right now where I have gone about five minutes longer than I anticipated, and I apologize for that. I tried to go through a speed round for you guys, but let's. I think what we have coming up right now is I want to show just this, and I touched on this in the product demonstration here. Let me just escape out of this. Go back here and show you guys this cost management slide real quick because this is pretty cool. I touched on this just real briefly in that last section of integration, but Autodesk Build just announced integration with uh, with ProS. So if you're if you're using the cost management module within Build, um, we have a really cool integration um, to ProS. You can convert that uh, detailed budget information that you have in ProS and send it to Autodesk Build to track those costs, right? So this is gonna help your project team track their budget and costs from day, from day one, right, of award. So increase, think of increased productivity, better data accuracy uh, from pre-construction right on through to, to bid complete or to project completion, okay? All right, I believe now uh, we are at the section um, of a poll. I think that's where we're at in this demo. So let's pause here for a minute and we'll do the poll. And you guys can go ahead and put some chat quest questions in the chat while this is going around too. And I'll review those questions and see what, uh, what we can answer. All right, let's see, we have a question in, is this just for general contracting type of estimates or this can also be used for mechanical contracting, plumbing, piping, sheet metal? Yeah, absolutely. You, you could use this for uh, plumbing. We have a plumbing database that you can get if you buy ProS. Um, we can give you this starter plumbing database. So it could be absolutely 100% used for that. Um, let's see, can ProS bring in Revit model that an outside engineer drew. Can Pro Spring in a Revit model that an outside engineer drew and build an estimate directly off the input of that model? At, at currently at this time, no. Um, but we are we are working on an integration to or a solution, I should say, for 3D takeoff. As you may or may not know, we do have a, th a 3D quantification tool at Autodesk, so we're working on on that relationship right now. 
Let's see, show some mechanical takeoff. If uh, out of time for takeoff on that. Is there split screen functionality? I you kind of look at estimate and takeoff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, certainly can do that. You can have as many uh, screens of ProS open as you wish. Uh, and uh, so you could have multiple tabs open. So you could you could have two monitors, three monitors. You can drag your estimate on one, your takeoff on another, most certainly, and it'll update in real time. Uh, how customizable is ProS? So Mike, it's it's kind of customizable in how you deploy it, right? So there's certain decisions we can help you make on how you set up things. We do a lot with sort types for reporting purposes. We have custom fields, which I didn't show you inside the estimate setup. So if there's data that you need to track related to the project, we can use custom fields for doing that. Um, we have things like workflow and templates that are built into ProS that we can help you set up as well to um, sort of automate some processes for you guys and think about the review process. You do an estimate and maybe there's an internal review that needs to happen. Uh, we can set that as a workflow up to make sure everything is checked off and doesn't get missed. So there it's, I would say it's somewhat customizable, but it's not a custom solution, if you will. The dollar amounts calculated in US or is it possible to use other currency like Canadian? <clears throat> Again, um, that would be something we could technically handle with a sort type uh, and Andre it's everything is in US dollar right now we don't have any currency um, sort of con conversion in there um, but it's something that we've you know discussed and I'm I'm sure at some point it's something we um, will address but you know given the nature of where we do business but um, right now we, we have to do that with a sort type and we can't convert that for you um, do you have database for millwork subcontractor butch we don't have a specific database for millwork. However, um, one of our databases has quite a bit of millwork items in it, but I wouldn't say it's millwork specific. Uh, can you import a uh, can you import a Bluebeam takeoff? We cannot do any um, takeoff importing at this time. Uh, let's see. Can you show us? A wall takeoff is it done with a line tool uh, yeah I think I showed that race in there I want to go with a line tool and then add in yes so I didn't show that race but that's exactly how you do it 100% so you would take off just a single line takeoff like I did the calendar uh, the counter and then underneath it you'd have a little box that pop up and says how tall is it right because sometimes I need to get vertical square footage or something like that so absolutely you can do that um, how many WBS fields are unlimited WBS fields are available, Mike? You know, as many as you want. Um, well, ProS completely integrated at one point into Autodesk Construction Cloud. <laughs> um, I don't know that I can answer that 100%, <laughs> but um, uh, can I say hopefully 100%? Um, let's see, where else? What else do we have? I think that may wrap up all the questions that are there. And let me just see. Grace, are we going to um, do the poll for these guys? I'm going to wrap this up. I know we went a, a little bit long um, on it. I guess just kind of in conclusion, guys, um, you know, the one of the things I wanted to, to, to highlight is that, you know, ProS really makes it possible for you guys to sort of digitize and standardize those manual error prone processes, right? And it's impossible to really get in depth, unfortunately, in 20 to 30 minutes on a demo. Um, but we'd love to talk with you guys about this further, but we can really improve your data accuracy. Uh, we can connect your 2D, your 2D takeoff to estimating. Uh, as I mentioned, we can have bidding workflows and really increase that transparency and collaboration across the teams um, and, and at your company. And, and we've, we've really seen some really good results, right? So while, while the disclaimer may be um, results, right, can, can vary uh, from from contractor to contractor, um, our customers have seen a tremendous increase in their estimate productivity, uh, their bidding efficiency, uh, things of that nature, right? So it, it's not uncommon at all to see a 50% increase um, or not, in, in, in estimating productivity. I mean, we see a lot of clients that, that report they're just doubling that productivity, right? They're able to really get more bids out because of the connected uh, solution that we're offering. They're, they're, it really, really cuts down 
on a manual process, especially if you take some time to engage with my team on, on services and setup, uh, we'll really make this transition easy for you. So we do have this one question for you guys. We'd love to spend some more time with you on a demo. And so um, I think Grace is going to put a poll up for you guys. And we're just going to ask you um, if, if it's something you'd like our team to reach out to you so we can give you a personalized one-on-one -on -one demo. We'd love to meet with you on that. If you just, just say yes to that, we'll make sure um, that we reach out to you guys for that. Hey, Troy. Yeah, that, that poll already went up. So thank you, everyone, for filling oh, that out. Yeah. Good. So I think we can conclude the webinar. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining today. And we hope to talk to you again soon.